Hi, I'm Logan Cook with Envision Property Management. Jura Boyd there behind the camera is going to help me today. Um, the purpose of this video is to give um, investors an idea of how I intake properties. Um, this property was bought at foreclosure, so it's a typical property. Um, there's going to be a lot of work needed on this house. Um, and this is a very representational of a lot of investment property in um, the metro Atlanta area. The property is about 17 years old. So, and I, I think it has all of the original systems, original roof, and not very many updates have been done to the property. So, um, let's get started and take a look around. We're just going to walk around. I'm going to point out some things that I look for when I am uh, intaking a property. Come on with me. As you can see, this property is um, what's called a split foyer. This grass here is called a Bermuda grass. It's kind of a crawling grass. It's very popular in Georgia. It's drought friendly. It's easy to maintain. It's hard to kill. Um, unless you allow um, what's happened here, the weeds to, to take over. So it's definitely time to get that um, under control. Um, you'll see it throughout most of the new construction and construction in Georgia. Okay, if we pan back towards the house, um, we'll have to cut back the shrubs. Usually what we do, we cut back the shrubs very hard, um, bring them back into shape, kind of at um, maybe in like a starter um, position. As you can see, they've done that over there on that property, the shrubs right there. And that's kind of what we're going to try to do here, just to make it easy for when a tenant moves in. Um, they don't have a lot to maintain with regards to the shrubbery. As you can see up there on the roof, um, that is a typical roof in Georgia. There are several different kinds of roofs available, but this is a composition roof, a composite roof. It's, um, it's, it's made with tar and it's called an asphalt shingle. Um, the, as you can see, there's a couple of shingles that have um, fallen off. So when we go inside, we would try to find if it would coincide with um, maybe some water stains in the ceilings. Um, Typically a roof, like a three-tap roof like this, is probably your uh, entry-level roof. They, their life expectancy is probably around 20 to 25 years. Uh, we're looking at 17 years of this, we're at the end of the life expectancy. Hopefully the roof can be saved, um, to, uh, but more than likely it's going to have to replace that roof within the next um, two what we'll do is we'll send out a certified uh, roofer to evaluate it and see if he can make some repairs. Up there, as you can see on the roof, there are one, two, three, four, five more pieces that have fallen, and usually that's due to wind damage. Um, now, on occasion, we might have a hailstorm, we might have a severe storm that would cause damage, and that is insured under your insurance. It's a catastrophic. That does not affect your premiums typically, but you would need to check with your um, your, your homeowner's insurance policy to see. A roof um, about that size, approximately five thousand dollars to replace it. Maybe um, you know sixty five hundred. It, it really depends. Come along here. Typically, I like to walk all the way around the exterior. If I can. This is a vinyl siding. The vinyl siding is a plastic siding. Um, almost every time that I intake a property, we try to pressure wash the property. As you can see, this, this it has mold on it that will grow, or a mildew, shall I say, that will grow on the siding. And it's well, we, we um, bleach it and we wash it. That is one of the benefits of vinyl siding that you do never, you don't typically ever have to paint it. Um, on occasion, what you'll find, you'll see that the buckling right there, you'll find a piece um, missing. And usually, after 17 years of the vinyl siding being on the house, it's very hard, very difficult to match it exactly. That's one of the downsides. Okay, now over here, this is what um, a typical baiting system for termites. Now, in Georgia, um, termites are prevalent. They're, we're one of the top um, places for termites. 
This baiting system has bait on the inside and it requires the um, termite company come out quarterly uh, to check and see if there's termites in there and they will spot treat any termites that arise. In future episodes, we'll get more into depth about your options with the uh, termites. Okay, of course we have some ants here that we'll need to treat and get off the house. Typically, ants are an indication of termites because they like to eat the termites. So you definitely don't want ant piles on your house um, at any time. Okay, I don't know if you can notice here, but there the, the ground is sinking. You look, it's about an oval size um, sinking here. This is very typical for um, houses built in, in this era. A lot of times uh, the builders, this is called a track subdivision. They come in and they develop the lots. And as they build the houses, a lot of times they'll bury um, their debris, which is typically wood, um, in the ground. And after, after time, that, that wood will decay and um, uh, decompose and cause the ground to sink. Um, most houses in, uh, built around this time also, or built in Georgia, are, are called frame houses. They're built with two by fours and, and uh, two by sixes. Um, Okay, if you want to take a look here, this is your typical um, foundation. It's a concrete slab foundation. And what they do is, is they, um, they pour the concrete and then they build the house um, from that. The other two types, um, typical types of foundations in Georgia are crawl space and, um, and basements. Now, crawl space and basements add um, cost to the builders to the building of, of properties. Typically, the reason why somebody would have a basement would be because of the, the lay of the land. If the, if the, if the lot is sloping a lot, they'll uh, typically call for a basement. might be required because of the way the, the land lays. But <clears throat> some people prefer basements, and they'll, they'll do that on purpose. Um, but it, it really depends. But the typical reasons for a crawl space would be the same, that there's a, a, a significant slope to the property. The benefits maybe of a crawl space would be um, access to pipes, access to um, different things. Whereas on a slab, if you ever have a broken pipe in the slab, um, it would you know cause to have to break up some concrete. But that's very that's not very typical because the slab concrete itself protects the property. Okay, right here is what you have is a is a gutter system. It catches the water that comes from the roof, so the water's not rushing and falling up down on the, on the foundation. It's a um, typical downspout coming down, trying to manage water. You always want to manage water to move away from the house. You know, um, that is a, a very important issue. Um, what you see there is the, um, the the box chase for the fireplace. And then you have a vent there with a bird cage over it, so you can't get in a nest in, in that. But we'll take a look um, more in depth at the root, um, the, the um, fireplace when we get inside. Okay, it looks like we have some serious problems with this deck. Um, it is um, definitely doesn't look safe. <clears throat> you're, you're having some severe twisting in this uh, in the. In the uh, Works. Uh, I, it may be salvageable, but probably most likely would, this whole deck would have to be re replaced. So, also what we're noticing, I'm noticing is, is there's been some serious twisting as well on the, the, the support beam that, that secures the deck to the house. It's actually bending away, exposing the lag bolts. And then the lag bolts go through it and they go into the skirt of the house. What, what happens when you have this twisting back, water can get into the lag bolts and go into the house and rot out the hole and cause, um, cause what's happening here where it could pull away from the house. So you would definitely not want to have any tenants on a deck that's in this condition. And to prove the point of water intrusion, as you can see, there's um, water's been getting behind this door and has rotted out the door. And anytime there's a lot of water intrusion, you run the risk of termites. And unless this is this is um, typical termite damage, uh, 
as you can see, they like to bring the dirt in because they're really soft animals. And this is what's caused um, this door to rot out. And if you step inside, you'll see here where water is coming into the, the, the property via the lag bolts that I had mentioned earlier. It's actually protruding right here where the deck pushing forward is actually pushing it out here. So this is definitely an issue that needs to be resolved. Um, a lot of times um, when builders put these in, they may not flash it properly. You know, you, want, you definitely don't want water to go in behind and get behind the lag bolts. So, yeah, come on out and we'll uh, take a look. Oh, there's another bait system. As you can see, they have the baiting systems on each side of the door. So they, these will be throughout the house. Okay, we have an air conditioning unit. This is a um, this is a um, air compressor. It has Freon. This is uh, very typical uh, for Georgia construction. Um, as you can see, the electrical shutoff here. We have um, insulated the uh, copper line here. Insulation on the uh, copper line here. This probably will need to be replaced with a new one. And then you have um, a condensation. Um, line drain line right here Cond here's the condensation drain line because as it runs it creates a condensation this being a, a two-story home it has two separate units one to serve the upstairs and one to serve the downstairs that would be called a zoned or dual unit um, property and uh, <clears throat> typically a, a unit like this may run uh, around fifteen hundred to twenty two hundred dollars if you had to replace it it's one of the major mechanical systems. In Georgia, we have uh, four seasons, four real seasons. We have, you know, uh, spring, summer, fall, and winter. These units run all year round. Whether it, uh, it's uh, AC or where it's running heat, there's constantly running. So it, um, it's good to get on a service agreement. Um, when we intake a property, we always suggest going ahead and having it, everything serviced. When they service it, they come out, they, they check the Freon in the property. There's typically a service charge, 150 to 175, 225, depending on how many units and uh, how much work they have to do. And then an additional charge would be checking the Freon, checking the system, cleaning the system. And we'll take a look at that more when we get inside. The AC units are on the outside and the, um, the, the furnace typically is on the inside. The furnace forces the air through the house and it usually has the heating system inside of it. Okay, right here we have an outside spigot. This is an outside water spigot so people can water their lawn. People can, um, you know, attach a hose and, and, and do whatever they need to do. There's a lot of times we'll, have, we'll find that these leak. Yeah, you know, there's a plate we um, have to replace them. It's just something to watch out for. Also in the winter time, you want to um, turn off the water on the inside for the spigot and open it up so you can drain all the water out so you don't um, freeze. And that's something that we share with the tenants. Typically we'll have them um, when they move in already uh, winterized and kind of leave it up to them to unwinterize it if they if they need it. You know, not typical that they'll need it. And uh, if they don't know how to turn it on, of course we'll turn it on for them, but actually show them how to turn it back off for winter. So you don't want a frozen pipes because that's another issue that could cause serious damage to your property that may be um, covered under insurance if you're doing everything properly, um, but it's just a headache you don't want to deal with. Okay, so there's another unit. And right here, what you'll find is this is a, uh, a vent for the, the dryer. You have a washing machine and a dryer in the house, and it connects to this, um, uh, to this unit so it can vent out of the house. The, um, also, similar to the birdcage that we had put on that we uh, on the fireplace, we would put here to prevent birds from nesting or crawling into there or any kind of um, vermits to get inside. Um, right here is a satellite dish. Typically, in most of these track subdivisions, there's cable available in the street, but some people like to have dish. We um, we don't allow tenants to install anything onto the house. A lot of times these uh, dishes are installed on, this, on the roofs which, which eventually cause um, leaking. So if they're not properly taken care of. So 
Um, this unit is actually um, in the ground, which is, would be the preferred um, installation method for this. This is how they get cable TV um, um, through the, to their house. Okay. the telephone through here so and then um, a charter uh, box a cable box like I had mentioned that would be typically wired um, at, at construction and so they have, a, they have a wire that's buried under the ground that um, they could have um, television service from now this is the same thing as a satellite dish that I just uh, mentioned it, it, you know it's for um, tele television um, but some people prefer dish for various reasons and this is the, the power that comes into the house. They have, they have buried the power lines under the ground. Um, sometimes they'll run the power from a pole to a house, and you might see that in the future. And this is the meter that they check in order to, um, you know, uh, gauge usage. They've gotten to a system now where they can; um, these are, can be checked remotely, so they don't have to come out and check them every week like they used to. As you can see, definitely in need of uh, pressure washing. Hey, Logan, can I mention something as well? Yes. Also, um, a lot of people will be interested in how, how they would obtain internet. That will also be usually provided through do, do Charter or through your phone company. So yes. they will actually run those wires through there as well. That's right. And they do have some satellite port, um, companies, but the internet is not as um, efficient through the satellite company. So a lot of people kind of opt for either cable or ADSL through their telephone company or through their cable company. Yeah, I agree. All right, so we have right here a missing um, elbow downspout, so the, so the water will be dropping right down onto the foundation. So typically what you want to do, you want to get the elbow, and this, um, this is called a splash block, and it prevents the ground from uh, eroding out underneath where the, where the uh, water comes out, kind of pushes it away from the house as well. And then we have another termite baiting system right there. Expense typically on a, on an intake anytime, whether it's a tenant moving out or moving in, is light bulbs. Uh, you wouldn't think about that, but some of these houses have a lot of light bulbs. This is not the proper light bulb for, for an outside um, uh, unit. It would more, more than likely be more of a floodlight. So when as people come in, come home and drive into their drives, they can actually see, and for safety purposes. Um, and then you got your typical aluminum uh, two-car garage here. Um, so keep moving along here we have um, this is a deck or, or a staircase that goes up to the front of the property it's definitely in need of some attention um, it, it's previously been painted so we we would have to go back with a paint instead of a stain we would have to always try to evaluate the integrity of the, of, of the stairs especially and the handrails um, replacing missing spigots this would have to be painted for sure but overall despite what it looks like it's in um, good condition um, pressure washing will help with a lot of the stuff you see here we have a bird nest there we have um, a very dingy uh, soffit that's called a soffit system and then um, and the siding here so all this stuff will look really nice and that's and most important this is you know when we renovate a property or when we intake a property we um, we try to make sure that the tenant would want to live here because typically we'll, we'll have happier tenants if you, if you do the, um, the, the, the property in a, in a nice clean manner and so most important initially is that getting the front looking nice when people walk up and it's nice and clean all right, let's uh, take a look at some of these uh, uh, issues going into the house. This is called a storm door, and uh, it's typical to have a storm door. A lot of times people will have a screen where they can have their door open and have a little bit of fresh air going in. But as you can see, the door handle is missing. Um, the hydraulic system is broken, and, there, and, and there's another hydraulic system. Now, if the door is in good shape, we can replace the hydraulic systems and salvage the door. I'm not so sure we're going to be able to find this door handle. So, more than likely, uh, it, it, if we're not able to find the door handle, we would just take this, this off and uh, putty the holes and, and, and 
because it's not necessary to have a storm door. It's, there is a benefit to it, but um, it would be up to the owner to decide whether or not they would want to replace it or, or, um, or remove it. Um, as, a, uh, in, in, as, a, as a contractor, I would say, you know, just for rental purposes, just to go ahead and uh, remove it um, to keep costs down. Okay, let's take a uh, take a look here. We got the doorbell. I mean, this is a. I know some of this stuff might be silly for me to point out, but uh, I, what I find is a lot of our international investors are not familiar with the homes here because they their houses are built different. They have different climates. So I just wanted to give everybody an idea of uh, what to expect and to look at when they're buying um, here in uh, Metro Atlanta, Georgia. All right, this is your typical foyer. Uh, for a split foyer um, uh, prop, uh, home, there's small stairs going up. There's a stairs going uh, up to the main level and, and down to typically where the bedrooms and baths or a den is located. Uh, I would, again, I want to remind you that this is a foreclosure, so it's going to be a little rough, going to be a little dirty. We'll uh, probably try to do a follow up after we get it all cleaned up and uh, painted and, and uh, jazzed up. All right, okay. Um, we'll, we'll just go upstairs here. Uh, Typical co uh, floor covering is uh, carpet. This is uh, um, and that's what you're seeing right here. This carpet will definitely need to be replaced. Uh, there is uh, bleaching uh, stains here. There, uh, you know, it's just really got a lot of wear and tear. Uh, and that is a, an additional cost as well. That uh, it's something that the investor has to um, prepare for. Also, these uh, these walls are in pretty rough shape. You'll find um, this kind of stuff going all the way through the house. So when I look at a property and consider painting, um, what affects the, um, the, the cost of painting is how much do we really have to paint? Um, do we have to paint every piece of trim, every, every baseboard, every handrail? Um, do, or um, sometimes like a house like this is a nice neutral color, so it would be easy to paint far as um, the color wise, but every square inch of this house will have to be painted. Sometimes when you run into designer colors, it's uh, more it's a cost effective to go ahead and cut uh, a little swatch out and match the color. Because if you, when you're matching the color, um, you, have, you can use uh, less paint. So tip, a typical paint job would be one to two coats and then uh, the, you know, the trim walls. Sometimes on a, on a house that's in good condition, you could just clean um, all the baseboards and everything, but that unfortunately is not the situation um, here in this house. So uh, I'd mentioned on the exterior of the property that there were some uh, shingles missing, and obviously there are some indications that water is getting into the property around the location of where the, uh, the shingles were missing. Um, there's another area here where the wall is, and it looked like um, this stain right here would be from uh, the roof. So there's definitely water getting in, which is um, not, not, not something that you want happening. Um, that's, you know, that's probably one of the most important aspects of the home is the roof and to keep it in good shape. Um, also here, getting back to the paint, you'll see that there's a lot of um, repairs, sheetrock repairs that will affect the cost of um, painting. And here again, more, more damage. When, when we uh, intake a property to get it ready for, um, for market, we also look at all the blinds in the property. Typically on this, on this house, every single blind would have to be replaced. It's either filthy or missing. Uh, landlord might ask us why we would choose to do something like that. It's because what we don't want is for tenants to, to move in and not be able to afford uh, coverings for their windows and then put up sheets and stuff like that. It doesn't look good from the outside of the property. A lot of times these, home, these uh, communities have um, homeowners associations and um, could cause fines or uh, fines you know, from the homeowners association. There's rules and regulations sometimes set up in a lot of these properties. This would be a good example of that, this type. Um, Typical homes that are built um, around this era will have what's called double pane windows. These windows have a gas on the inside of the window that uh, actually helps um, bring down 
the, uh, radi the, the sun's radiation into the house, so it makes the house more efficient. Um, and it holds back heat. Um, this is a typical example of the seal of that has been compromised. Now, for rental purposes, it's not necessary to replace this window, um, but when you go to sell it, you would definitely need to have that replaced. It would be something that would come up in inspection, and of course, it would be negotiable. So, another good thing about this type of window, you lift it up a little bit. Typically, you have a window screen, like you see on this side, um, to keep prevent uh, bugs from coming in so you can open your windows. But this gives you an easy way to clean your window. If somebody wants to clean the outside of their, their window. Also, this, this bottom sash can come out. I'm not going to do that here, but it does make it easier to uh, repair these windows. Okay, so I mentioned the uh, fireplace on the outside of the house. Well, this is the uh, a typical fireplace. You'll have your, of course, your mantle, and then uh, a little hearth here that's on the floor. Sometimes they're built up, uh, sometimes they're flat. This is just a, um, a slate hearth. Looks like it's been painted. The construction of this fireplace is, is, uh, is called a fire kit. This is a, um, a fire brick that's made, um, so it, it resists heat. Um, this, of course, holds the logs, and then you have these little pop-outs here. If you have gas available, you could do a gas kit. We were, um, sometimes people like to have the gas kit to get the wood started, and they just turn it off. Um, this does not have that, or you could convert it into some, uh, like a gas log that's actually metal logs. It looks like wood. wood. Um, these uh, fireplaces, too, have a vent. Um, as you can see, I just opened it up and some uh, bugs have come out of there. It's probably because the vent system is kind of uh, needs, a, needs a new cover. And this uh, flue that goes all the way up through the top of the roof um, does need to be cleaned on occasion because uh, when you burn w certain woods, it will cause soot to... Um, to develop. And you also you want this in the all open position so the smoke can uh, exit the property. And that's closed. It's open and closed. So we usually typically just leave it closed. Um, I prefer tenants not to use the fireplace, but uh, on older properties that have um, older fireplaces, um, they I will typically close those up. Now, another way that you can construct this is using um, actual brick. It's called a masonry fireplace. Um, but we don't see those very often on, um, on this type of property. They're usually uh, reserved for older properties or higher end, um, you know, uh, expensive properties. Okay, well, follow me here. We'll go into the kitchen. Um, another uh, example of the of typical flooring. This is called a vinyl laminate. It's the least expensive, typically, option. Um, there are this is there are some nice attractive um, uh, options for vinyl. They, they, some of them can even look exactly like tile. As you can see here, this is one of the um, ways that you could uh, fail with the vinyl is is, is scratching and tearing. That uh, it's very hard to patch something like that when you have a tear in your vinyl. Other options would be for a kitchen would be tile, ceramic tile which is, um, of course, more expensive and more labor-intensive to put in, but it, it's very durable and typically lasts longer. Um, you have to be careful of putting uh, a tile on an on a upper floor like this because the floor has a more flex, but there are ways to um, support that. This is a typical um, oak-style uh, cabinetry, as you can see. Um, and then we have uh, countertops. Uh, these, are, these are called Formica countertops and very typical in this type of um, construction of home. As you can see, there's a chip here and you know, we'd have to get, get in there and really clean it. Um, so these uh, typical shelving systems. There, um, this, is, this outlet here, one of the code when you're building a property um, in Georgia is they have ground fault circuits 
and ground fault circuits are usually typically um, anything near water. I don't know if you've seen in those horror movies where an uh, oven or a little toaster is falling into or a blow dryer is falling into a tub. Well, this is what's supposed to protect that. If you were to have a, um, an appliance plugged into this GFI outlet and it was to touch water or, or there was a surge, then um, it would trip. Um, this outlet is identified as a GFI outlet and they're all tied into this one outlet here. So you have um, like a test. So that outlet does not work at this point. Ne neither do any outlets that it's connected to and that would be the other two that I had mentioned before. It's a simple fix. Just push the reset button and it's good to go. This is the way you can test and make sure that this is working. So the uh, sometimes we'll have tenants call and say their outlets aren't working and this is typical a typical reason why. Um, okay, and then right here, of course you have your typical sink and you have you know, a sprayer for the water. And we we'll always try to check as best we can hot water and uh, with the pressure, making sure there's no leaks. Run the water on this and uh, look for previous leaks. And, um, but also when we're painting the property or we're doing minor repairs uh, on a renovation, I have the guys use um, all these systems in order to <clears throat> look for anything that might come up for a tenant because we want as little um, bumps in the road when they move in. Um, so, sometimes you'll find uh, what's called a, um, a garbage disposal. This one does not have a garbage disposal, but we are tied into a drain here that goes over to uh, a dishwasher. And most properties um, built around this time is going to have a dishwasher. Um, we always check that and make sure it's clean. Just like on this one, you have some wheels missing. Um, not sure if it's draining properly. We just have to run that um, down the road and see. There's a heating element that helps dry the um, the, uh, the, um, the the plates and everything. Uh, a typical package, like you would see here, a, um, a, a dishwasher, a stove, a, a vent hood, and a microwave. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, or, or a mic vent hood, microwave, and a refrigerator. You're looking at around $1,500 to $2,500 to replace those. It's uh, uh, this particular um, range here is in a, it doesn't like it's in really good shape. Uh, it's, it's called an electric uh, stove. It has an electric, electric element on it, and it has a, an oven to bake goods in. But it looks like the element has been bent and damaged. There's no shelving in here, so more than likely this would have to be replaced. Um, this uh, particular unit is is um, electric, and a lot of times they have the option for both. This one does not. So the other option would be uh, gas, which would be natural gas, due um, to you know the service this. Um, and as you can see, there's some cabinet uh, uh, drawer doors missing, and there's some adjustments that will need to be made. Um, we have good ca carpenters that can do that. We've got a little adjustment right there. Okay, so this property has a, what's called a separate uh, dining area. This, uh, this is where they would uh, have breakfast and dinner together as a family. Um, it's a nice room. We would put some blinds up here. Um, there's a lot. It's very warm in here right now because all the heat coming in. The blinds will help that. Um, a lot of times, too, as a landlord, one thing to consider is um, utility cost. Uh, you know, you want your home to be as efficient as possible because you want them to have as much money available at the end of the month to pay their rent. Um, when you have a house that's super inefficient with uh, we have very high gas bills, very high electric bills. If they're not insulated properly, or uh, and then they don't, they don't have good wall, wall um, window coverings on them to prevent the heat from coming in, and they're having exorbitant um, utility bills, and it just causes trouble down the road. So, I even had had investors convert their houses completely to electric, just to, just to, so the tenant will just have one bill. 
Um, also, if the doorbell here is missing its cover. There's just little minor things like that that, you're, that will have to be addressed. You don't want to leave that uh, for a tent to look at every day as they go to work. It, it just um, kind of, it's a morale thing. You want them to be proud of the home that they're in. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to have uh, granite countertops and tile everywhere. But it does have to be clean and uh, complete. Okay, look, we've got another little hole here. This is a thermostat for the upstairs. Um, so you got your, your cooling and your heat. So, and you got your fan on, on or an auto. Always is typically auto because on is the fan's just gonna run 24 seven. The auto will only run the fan when it's necessary. And you would change your, um, your temperature settings right here. Now there's several different options for thermostats. There's programmable thermostats where people can um, go to work and it, it automatically at eight o'clock uh, change the temperature and turn it back on at, at five o'clock. You can't do huge increments of change in temperature, but you can do some to help save energy. And then they have smart ones that you can connect to your phone. You can turn it on and off and in uh, different temperatures right there from your phone. Okay, we're coming in here into the, this is the hall bath. This is the shared bath. Typically on a house like this, this is five bedrooms, three full baths. And there, there will typically be a main bedroom, which is typically, you know, like a parent's bedroom that will have uh, a full bath in it. So you don't have to leave your room. But this bath is typically shared with the other two bedrooms on this, on this floor. Um, typical issues that I like to look for, of course, um, is the toilets. Uh, most of the time, the toilets will have to be, toilet seats will have to be replaced. You don't want that uh, with your tenants uh, in the house. Typical maintenance issues are these uh, these pumps. They they get old. The the, the gaskets get um, uh, um, get old and wear out. And it's a good idea a lot of times just to replace this kit with, with a simple replacement that you just we just get from Home Depot, just to um, assure there's no issues. Because a little water leak could cost a lot of money for a tenant. And it could just be water, uh, water leaking in the tank and um, it could cause serious issues for, for cost. And we have had issues where, you know, they'll actually leak and then go down into um, the, the lower floor, which I think might be the issue here. Uh, this stuff could be replaced. We also always like to have drain stops in our sinks. This one is not operable. Well, yeah, so it's uh, working okay. Hot and cold um, uh, taps. I always like to have make sure they're labeled. Um, back to the light bulb situation, uh, we would definitely replace those light bulbs with the appropriate light bulbs. Um, likely to remove the uh, the wallpaper on this property as well. Another issue here we got this is a, a tub. It's a fiberglass tub. It's very um, typical for. Um, for this type of year of construction, you have your, and of course your hot and cold, and then you have, you, you know, if you wanna take a shower or a bath, we try to keep these as clean as possible for the tenants when they move in. Um, more, I always recommend replacing the, um, the shower heads. Now shower heads are is not an expensive replacement. The cost for materials for just a new head, you know, 20, 25 bucks. But as you can see here, there's con there's rust that's in here, and there's uh, it's just it's hard to clean. A lot of times, that type of stuff will get stuck into the holes, and you would have uh, uh, not appropriate uh, amount of water coming out. Um, also, a tenant does not want to see this when they're taking a shower in the morning. Um, another issue is is that people will replace them with the wrong shower head, and maybe it would cause too much of a spray, and you get water coming over on the tub onto the floor causing more issues. And that's definitely more of an issue on a property like this where it has two levels. And we always definitely want drain stops in those. Typical tub, the this right here is a shower rod. And typically we don't provide shower rods, but they will, you know, let people will have sometimes their own designer shower rod that they like to put up. But yeah, as you can see, every door in this place needs to be um, painted and to include the trim. Um, 
I'll now here down into the hall. This property has you know, a, a nice little coat closet, which is nice to have. Right here, you'll, you'll find a um, smoke detector. And that is one of the most important um, things that you'll find in a, in a property. You know, you want to make sure they're all optional, uh, operational. We have um, double checks and checks and balances to make sure that they all, all work and they all have um, new batteries in them. And if they're wired, they're working properly. Yeah, because uh, the most important thing, you want people to be safe when they're living in your house. Um, on down the way right here, we have the laundry room. And this is a, or a laundry closet. This is where the, the washing machine will go. You got a, a hot and cold, and you go right here. Oops, there's a little drain right here. That's where the it would drain out when it's time. Um, right here, there is a pan missing. Now, since this is on the second floor, if something was to ever happen with your washing machine and it was to overflow, you would want a pan there to, to catch some of the water, or if, if not all the water this would be something that would need to be installed here and this is where your dryer will go this is your uh, dryer outlet it's a four prong dryer outlet which is the safest outlet um, and it's the one that's required for most units right now if it's not a four prong a lot of times we have we'll, tr we'll transfer it to a four prong and this is the vent where the um the that vents out the lint and the heat from and the moisture from the uh, from the dryer, and I pointed out earlier when our exterior, when we were walking around the exterior, that will require on the exterior a little bird cage to keep animals from going in, um, and it may definitely needs to be clean on occasion because you will build up um, uh, lint in those, and the lint will um, be a fire hazard if not taken care of. This right here is a system, this is a minor adjustment a lot of people don't think of and this is what I have my contractors watch out for. This needs to be um, screwed up and secured and it's just a ball system. A lot of times we have to replace these systems here on top of the door and here um, just because like as you can see this was how worn out it's getting and how loose those are. But those are the, those are the little things that um, as a property management company it's very important that, they, that we keep an eye out for. Um, because you don't want people not to be able to open and close their doors, and if they they can't close it, they'll, it's a lot of times so, you know you, you run into some sort of breakage, and you don't want that to happen. So this would be considered the master bedroom or the um, the main bedroom of the home. As you can see, it has a, a tray ceiling or a, or a, a tray slash vaulted ceiling, um, a ceiling fan fixture here. Um, it's another uh, item when we're going to the end, where we're in the end of the, uh, the renovation, is to clean these, clean on top of the blades, um, just to get a nice fresh start, nice fresh clean. Yeah, that's, that's the little delicate touches that are so important. Um, all the light bulbs are here um, <clears throat> currently. Usually there's a switch for the lights and a switch for the fan in this, in this room. All right, and then we have the master bedroom closet. Typically, it's the largest closet in the house because um, you're gonna, you know, it's typically um, husband and wife would be living here or um, a couple would be living here and you have two sets of clothes in there. So, gotta have some room. Typical closet. Of course, there's two um, sets of blinds here and as you can see, um, they're torn. So, I, I know that we're gonna have to replace all the blinds in this property, unfortunately. Here's another indication of a, of a water leak. It looks like somebody has tried to fix it. There's a little bit of paint right here, pink paint that doesn't match. Um, like somebody maybe tried to spray it or kills it. Um, the discoloration, and I'm fairly certain that it's gonna be something to do with the roof, unfortunately. <clears throat> and another indication of water here, and I'm not sure where that might be coming from. Typical um, with the bathroom here, you have a, a garden tub, you have a separate shower, um, double vanities is very typical uh, for a, you know, a master uh, main suite of a property. Um, <clears throat> we always make sure, here's an example where the uh, drain plugs are missing. 
fun. And a lot of times if you don't take care of that properly and go ahead and replace it, people will lose items in there or they'll drop items in there that shouldn't be in there and, and not know how to retrieve it. It's a fairly simple fix. Um, sometimes we have to replace the entire kit. Sometimes we could just put in uh, a new um, plug. But it's something that I always recommend to take care of. Again, we have the Formica countertops. And unfortunately, we have a burn in the Formica countertops. And um, it's very likely that, that would need to, this top would need to be replaced. Um, you just, you know, we just don't want to have those types of issues on a, on, a, on, a, on a rental property. Also, too, always try to check, making sure that, the, uh, that there's no leaks. As you can see here, the way this is called a trap, the way it uh, sinks in like this. And this is the trap, any you know, debris, and it, it does hold water. So a lot of times when a house sits for a little while, you might get a little sour smell. So it's good to um, have your guys have my guys come in and run the water on every single thing for a period of time just to get those cleaned out. And then there's another closet, so I usually call that the hers and hers closet. <laughs> uh, this light bulb not working, so that's another thing that need to be addressed. I know it seems to be redundant, but it's, uh, it's, it's important and it, there is a cost involved every time you, know, you turn a house, every time somebody moves out to replace all the light bulbs. As you can see, they have the wrong light bulbs in that fixture. Again, you'll find the GFI outlets. This outlet is protected. So if somebody had a hairdryer here and they had somebody in the tub and it was a fall in the tub, the, 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 um, it was, it's supposed to trip to where it doesn't work. It's connected to this outlet. So again, you have the, the, t uh, the test and then the reset. Um, so, and even if it's just like, you know how um, maybe something will spark or, or whatever, that's supposed to catch that. And you'll find that and in the breakers in the, um, when we look at the electrical panel. Alright, let's look at this shower real quick. A lot of times these shower doors, and this is a perfect example, are, are in any repair. As you can see, will not close. They do sell little minor kits to fix. As you can see, this is bent. Um, it may just take a, a, an adjustment or it may have to be replaced. I'm not even opposed to just removing it. The only issue that we have when we remove it is the holes that it's secured. So if we can repair it, we will. Um, but it, it, there is a possibility of just putting a shower curtain here. So again, in the shower, you know, you gotta always check the drain pan because that could be an issue. Any cracks in the in the uh, in there, we would definitely we would replace the shower head. As you can see, the discoloration and uh, the rust, and um, you know, those little holes get full. And, and if you you know if you're moving, living in here and you're having to look at that, at the you know the um, as you're taking a shower, it just it's not a good feeling. So it's, it's really good to try to be good to your tenants and have that stuff replaced. All right. This will move on to the bedrooms. All right, so a uh, nice feature of this house has a little, uh, little laundry closet. So, you know, for towels or, or um, different things. It's right connected, right next to the laundry room. And these are, this is the two bedrooms. Uh, uh, on the upstairs to, to complete the two secondary bedrooms and these bedrooms would share the bathroom that we that we had went to and you can see there's some pretty serious repairs um, involved here to um, you know and some of this glue and stuff like that and that does affect the uh, the, uh, the price you know, of, of uh, renovation unfortunately so but a lot of times um, you know, when people know that they're going to be foreclosed and they're going to have to be forced to move out, they will um, they'll abuse the property. It um, just happens. Here's a window. And these things sometimes get out of adjustment. As you can see, there's um, some stuff broken in here, so eventually these windows will have to be redone. Um, this, this is a fairly large closet for a secondary bedroom. It's almost the width of the room. 
And as you can see, there's some repairs here that involve the shelving system. And this is a very typical shelving system. It's very efficient. Um, it's light. It's sturdy. Um, typically, it looks like somebody may have hang, hung on it, but it would have to be replaced because it's, it's bent. But this is a, a great shelving system um, that, that's used a lot in, in um, properties constructed around this time. Same secure system here. All right, and just pretty much a little bit more of the same um, here in the secondary bedroom. But now we're getting into more issues with the roof. We're going to find them. And, uh, and it's very typical for, it's kind of a great spot. I, well, I say great spot, but it um, indicates exactly where that leak is coming um, from that, from the roof. So there's certainly some issues with the roof, and we're hoping that the um, roofing contractor can help with that. And then this right here, um, water coming in right at the air conditioning vent. So this air conditioning vent uh, is connected to the HDAC in the attic. So up in the attic, there's another unit that we'll be, we're going to look at the one on the main floor. Here's another example of the condensation that's in between the panes. This is not on the outside or the inside, it's on the inside of the double panes. So you have a glass and then you have uh, a gas on the inside that, that, that lowers the, um, the, the sun's rays and then you have the glass on the outside and they got these little decorative things in here. This would have to be replaced. Not necessarily replaced for rental purposes, but it definitely would need to be replaced at some point. And that would be the owner's option if they want to do it now or then will wait till they're, um, you know, they want to sell the property. Because typical people who want to buy to, to live in the property, they want those types of things addressed. All right. Let's go uh, take a look downstairs. All right, so heading on downstairs, the, this house is wired for an alarm system. Um, typically, they do the main floor and the front door for a, for a, a, a electric. A, for, the, for that, that, that's the tenant's responsibility if they would want to have that serviced. That is not something that the seller would pay for. On occasion, um, depending on um, our, our fear of um, theft, we will turn these, activate these um, in, in, for, the, for a short term while they're under renovation if we feel like there's any threat of um, uh, vandalism or theft. Okay, so now we're on the, on the lower level of the property. Um, there's going to be some secondary bedrooms down here. There will be a full bathroom down here. This is a little uh, um, utility closet. We keep you the um, vacuum cleaner, etc. Here is a, um, a, a typical secondary bedroom on the, on the main floor. It has a small closet. Um, look, I was able to find the, uh, the glass to go over the, the light fixture, so I set it there to make sure nobody misses it. We want to get it up. Um, all the flooring on this floor would have to be replaced, um, like the upstairs. Um, we, are, uh, we do experiment with some uh, laminate that is this, uh, a good option instead of carpet, because a lot of times you can just replace pieces of the laminate. We'll get into that later when we go through more through some uh, floor covering options. Doorknob missing. Uh, that's just another little expense. It's not much, but it's you know all that has to be repaired. Now this here would could be considered a bedroom. It does have a closet in it, but it would typically be it would likely be more of a den. So this, main, this floor would have its own den. You'd have the bedroom here, and you'd have another bedroom, and they would share this bathroom here. And uh, nothing out of the ordinary here. We would light bulbs. We would properly install uh, uh, blinds where it's not sitting on the outside like that. We have, um, it definitely would get in a new Shower head here. Make sure everything's running. Nothing's leaking. Same thing with the with this with the um, with the toilet system there. Oh, and we see here is uh, evidence of a leak. 
So that would have to be explored. Uh, I've already shown you the back door here. Uh, there has been some rain recently, and you can hear that the, the pad under the carpet is wet. So it's definitely still leaking on um, where the deck is attached to the house. And then this is the other bedroom that would be complete. Of the five bedrooms, or three bedrooms upstairs, two bedrooms on the main level. Um, of course, you know, replacing the blinds here. Uh, the, 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 the glass we would leave, it would, unless the uh, owner would like us to remove it. There's a, it's in good shape if there was cracks in it or anything like that. Or if it was not installed very well, we would typically get rid of it. Um, as you can see, there's another indication of a leak. Um, I, uh, the good thing is, uh, what, this is typically what happens to a leak. Um, when, you, when the water is sitting on the sheetrock, I don't know if you can um, see it, but it actually bows. It starts to sink and causes the discoloration. Now, somebody has taken a pin and, and poked it so the water can drain out, which is, uh, which is very good to um, do that. So typically, we would just cut out a hole here um, with our uh, sheetrock knife and uh, explore where the leak is coming from. Likely it's a bathroom or a kitchen but on this on this floor. Okay, so now we're getting into the HVA system. There's not a lot of light here. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's not a light in here. But this is your typical system. You know, um, they have what's called returns right here. This sucks air in from the house um, through a, a return, and then it and, uh, cools it or heats it and distributes it throughout the house. Now, um, this system services the lower level. Um, so one of the things, of course, you'd want to always have this um, uh, serviced, but I, don't, I do not see um, a pump for the condensation line. So this, this unit will create uh, uh, some condensation, which is water, and if it's not piped, properly out of the house, it will drop here onto the floor. So typically this is connected to a little pump with a little uh, a bulb on the inside. Once it gets high enough, it'll, it'll pump the water up and out of the house. So this definitely needs to be serviced before it's even um, uh, worked on. One thing, uh, as far as maintenance wise, and you, you want to make sure your tenants are aware, is that every unit has um, a, a filter. This one here, this is where I uh, showed you the pipe coming out. It's sucking air through here, and as it does, it's being in the filter. So this filter is definitely in need of changing. You never want your filter to look like this. This is an efficiency issue. If it's not able to draw the air in, if it's struggling to draw the air into the property, it's going to cause, um, uh, definitely uh, cost-wise with your, um, your utility bills. So... Um, that's one of the major factors with tenants is just, you know, training them to, to do that. And we do suggest have, just going ahead and having the house on a maintenance schedule. That way they don't, you don't have to worry about the tenants never um, changing the filter. Changing the filter does put a, not changing the filter does put a strain on the system. So it's something very important. Uh, it's a little bit more money, but to have uh, a uh, heat and air guy that you trust come in here um, four times uh, a year is a good is a good idea. And then, of course, this thermostat runs the lower level. Another thing that here that I missed is um, looks like somebody has kicked this door in, so that's uh, a repair. So um, let's see. Uh, I think there's a. <clears throat> Going to come around here to the garage. <clears throat> now this is a typical door for uh, uh, for any door that leads to the outside. We are here at the garage. Uh, this door here is an insulated door, and it's typical to put an insulated door anywhere that leads to an uninsulated area. Your front door, your rear door, your garage door. A lot of times there's attic spaces that are connected to an insulated area. It should be insulated. Um, to it, it, uh, not allow heat and cold to come in. Um, this door, unfortunately, has been broken. It's not repairable. 
So this door will have to be replaced. Uh, coming on in here, we have a typical garage. Uh, this is a two-car garage. They do have um, the electrical uh, openers, which is great because one of your tenants to move their cars in here uh, in, with the openers. Um, but this door here has been compromised, so we've had it. We had it bolted shut. There's a break right here. This top panel will have to be replaced before anybody can use it. Um, now, if, a, if, a, if you know, that is an option for a landlord, I would suggest to always have them operational. We could take the, uh, the chain unit out and just have somebody use it manually. It is an option. Um, but you know, if you have someone coming in, coming into the home with groceries, and uh, you know there, it's raining outside, it's nice to be able to pull into your garage and, and get rid of um, those things here. When I mentioned on the exterior pressure washing, we would always pressure wash the garage floor because the garage floor will typically have oil and stuff, so we'll do a degreaser on it and pressure wash it just so it won't be perfect. The garage is never perfect. We don't typically paint the garage garages every time we intake a property, but um, it's a good idea to have it nice and clean. Um, we have another water issue here. Um, that would have to be addressed, and we have to explore where that water is um, coming in prior to repairing that. Um, the light fixture is missing right here, as it's supposed to look like that on that side. Um, we would definitely um, suggest putting a new fixture in, and it's a simple one that's in the globe. Alright, right here, this is a typical electrical panel. And you saw the there's on the outside you saw the, the power coming in under the ground and it comes up here into this panel. And these are the breakers that uh, that are, that are protect protected breakers. Um, and then we have the labeling here. This is the water heater. Um, there's two breakers right here for the water heater. Um, the AC for the downstairs has two breakers here. The um, and the furnace. And then um, more furnaces, then you have a stove and the AC and dryers. Um, sometimes you have to be very careful with um, hot water heaters if they're electric to never turn the, the, them on with no water in them or you'll, you'll, you'll ruin it. So then you have the bedrooms and lights and stuff and these bedroom ones are typically a little more um, sensitive. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just, uh, just part of what um, is required by code enforcement here. So if you were ever to have a surge or something, it was it would trip here, and it would reset um, the breakers there to reset the power to that. Um, over here to your to the left is the hot water heater, and this hot water heater is electric. It does have water in it, so it's safe to turn on the power. There, of course, there's typically this is your typical um, installation. Uh, having a tank, there are tankless issues, uh, tankless ones as well. This heats the water for the whole house. This has an this is an electric hot water heater. There's a, an electrical um, wire coming in here. This right here is if the pressure was to ever build in the tank from the outside water too much. It'll it'll release water as you can hear it's going out and going outside. Uh, and this is your um, hot, and then, and it, well, this is your water coming in and your water going out to the house. So if you ever wanted to turn off the water, it would be done right there. And the adjustments for the heat on the two, there's two elements here, would be right here. If you ever wanted to drain it, would be right here. The good thing is that the property, it's in the garage, so you don't have to worry about if it was leaking, doing much damage. Um, to the to the park property because you got a lip here the the the, the um, driveway was poured separately than the foundation so we won't have water going in and, and seeking on the uh, the carpet the only thing that would be this wall here but otherwise it's a, it's a very safe place for the hot water heater all right well let's get it out this way.
I think that kind of um, gives you an idea of what we do. We're going to do several more of these videos of different properties, different property constructions, so you can get an idea of, of what you're buying when you're buying um, here in the metro Atlanta um, area. We'll also do a follow-up video once this pro house is um, uh, all cleaned up and painted and new flooring and everything else so you can get an idea of, of, of how it's going to look when it's done. Thank you so much, and we've enjoyed uh, spending some time with you.